So in this section, we're going to be taking a look at centres of mass. And the first thing that I want to do is just to look at some objects and consider where the centre of mass is going to be. So first object is this metre ruler. Now, where do you think the centre of mass would be for the metre ruler? Now, you're probably thinking, well, it'll be at the centre, won't it? OK, and one of the old checks of this is if you put your hands either side uh, like so and then uh, you just move your hands towards the centre, then, you know, I'm not changing which hand is moving. OK, it's because it's trying to find the centre of mass and my hands come together right at the centre. OK, so it's quite a neat way of like being able to find where the centre of mass is and checking that that would make sense. Now, that centre is also on the line of symmetry through the centre of the ruler and also through the centre of the line of symmetry there as well. Okay? It's where those two lines cross. And so that is where your centre of mass would be. So, that is also because the ruler is uniform as well. Um, or at least I can, it's not perfectly uniform, of course, um, in real life, but um, you would model it as such, wouldn't you? Okay, there's all the same material. Um, so let's take a look at another example. Okay, so we have uh, my protractor here, my board protractor. Now, where do you think the centre of mass is going to be for this one? Now, in the case of my board protractor, it does have this handle at the front. OK, uh, which obviously adds mass to the object. Um, but think about the line of action. OK, what line is it going to be on? So it wouldn't be over here, would it? OK, or right at the end here. You would be expecting that the centre of mass would be on the line of symmetry okay, of the protractor. And you'd be right. Now, the centre of mass is probably going to be somewhere around maybe here. OK, maybe here, because that uh, handle at the front is quite heavy. Uh, but you would be expecting it somewhere along that line, OK, that line of symmetry. So for regular shapes like this where you can see a line of symmetry, what you will find is that the centre of mass will lie on it. But the centre of mass doesn't, for an object, doesn't need to actually be on the object. Now... That can seem quite odd, but there's a very basic example that I can mention where that would be the case. Think of a ring, so a ring for your finger, for example. Um, the centre of mass of that would be dead in the centre of the ring. So that's not actually on the object itself, it's inside. So hollow objects will have their centre of mass on the inside. OK, so the centre of mass doesn't have to be actually located on the object itself, which can be a little strange. Now, when we try and calculate and find the centre of mass of an object, what we're going to be doing is using a weighted average approach. And to show you an example of working with weighted averages um, before we actually get into finding centres of mass, uh, we're going to take a look at this question here. Dan sits three tests to try and pass his pilot's exam. He scores 79% in test A, 62% in test B, and 83% in test C. However, each test counts for a different proportion towards his overall result. Test A is worth 50%, test B is worth 30%, and test C is worth 20%. He needs to achieve an overall result of 75% to pass. Does Dan pass? So I'm going to approach this question in a very similar way to how we're going to approach finding the centre of mass of objects. We're going to think of test A, B and C separately. Each of these tests has a percentage worth. Okay, that they're worth towards the overall result. Now, in that case, we've got 50% 30% and 20%. Now, Dan has a result for each of these. His results are 79%, 62%, 
and 83%. And what you would do is you would multiply the worth by the result. Okay, so we would have 0 0.5 times 0 0.79, so 0 0.395. You would have 0 0.3 times 0 0.62, which is 0 0.186. And then you would have 0 0.2 times 0 0.83, which is 0 0.166. And once you've got all of those results, you would add them together and find the total. So 0 0.166 plus 0 0.186 plus 0.395, and we get 0.747. Now, the total worth, of course, is 100%. We don't need to add up the total of the results. That wouldn't make much sense. So, what we've got is that value divided by that value. So 0.747 divided by 1 is, of course, 0.747. So uh, that as a percentage is 74.7%. So this is Dan's score, which is unfortunately below the result of 75% that he was looking for, and so he does not pass. But it is this method of uh, finding a weighted average which we will utilise to find the centre of mass of um, compound shapes. So they might be uh, rectangles with rectangles, or it might be with triangles, um, or it could be uh, semicircles. Um, so we'll be dealing with all sorts of different shapes, and we'll also do some 3D shapes as well as part of this section.